The idea of making a judgment is not a popular idea. Especially if somebody's going to tell you that you're doing something wrong, the very common reaction is, well, you're not supposed to judge me because Jesus said, do not judge. Is that what he said? Is, that the con is there a context behind the statement that you find in Matthew chapter 7? The answer is yes. This week, I want to take a look at judgment in a couple of different ways. Today, Matthew chapter 7, John chapter 7, even a statement in, he in, in Isaiah chapter 11 from the Hebrew Old Testament, judgments that we make. And Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 is often quoted when people feel like somebody is judging them for something. Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. There in chapter 7 of the Sermon on the Mount. And people say, see there Jesus said, don't judge. Look at the context in which he makes that statement. Judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. You receive uh, judgments in the same way that you judge other people. Well, yeah, but Jesus says still, don't judge. Just a few verses later, he says this, in verse number six. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn and attack you. Now, how do I know into what category an argument or a person, a point of view, may fit this particular statement in verse six? if there is no judgment that can be made about anything. You see, it doesn't fit the context. In fact, in the Gospel of John, in John chapter 7, Jesus makes a statement in verse 24, Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. Older translations say judge with righteous judgment. I'm reading out the English Standard Version. I really like the New King James. I use it more than anything else. Phil Sanders, a speaker on the In Search of the Lord's Way program, told me not too long ago that the New American Standard is still his favorite, but he said that he's done a lot of reading out of the English Standard Version. And he said, as far as English translations go, that's really my second choice. It's a very well done translation into English. Here's that verse again in John chapter 7. Do not judge by appearances, the judge with right judgment. Use some common sense in the way that you approach those kind of situations. In the commentary on the Gospel of John by Michaels, there's a statement about this particular verse in John. Don't judge by appearance, Jesus concludes, but judge the right judgment. The cognate accusative judge the right judgment echoes Hebrew style. And on the surface, the pronouncement sounds like a Hebrew prophet's plea for simple justice. But the phrase by appearance is striking. A reader familiar with the Old Testament will recall Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 3. Jesus asked nothing more or less than they judge with simple fairness, without partiality or favoritism, as he himself judges. Chapter 5 of John verse 30, Just as I hear, I judge, Jesus said, and my judgment is right because I am not seeking my will, but the will of the one who sent me. This the people have not done. And Jesus and John point that out. Judge with right judgment. Hendrickson, in his commentary, makes a similar comment about the statement that's found in, in Matthew chapter 7 in the Sermon on the Mount. And the statement is this. Jesus begins chapter 7 by saying, Do not pass judgment on others, as in chapter 6, verse 1, verse 19, verse 20, and chapter 7, verse 7. It's a principle that's first stated and then explained. Did Jesus, did the Lord mean when he said judge not, did he mean that all manner of judging is absolutely and without any qualification forbidden so that with respect to the neighbor we are not allowed to form and or express any opinion whatever? Or at least that with respect to him, we must never voice an adverse or unfavorable opinion. And a lot of what Jesus himself says in this very paragraph, we mentioned that about don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't give what is holy to the dogs. He implies we must regard certain individuals as being dogs or hogs. And with a lot of other passages that could be added, it is clear 
that no such wholesome condemnation affirming an opinion about a person and expressing it can have been intended. Jesus himself had arrived at certain conclusions regarding scribes and Pharisees, and he did not hesitate to express them. And though it's true that we on our part cannot read what is in our neighbor's heart just as Jesus was able to do, and so that our judgment must be more reserved and can never be final, there is nothing in the teaching either of Christ himself or of the apostles after him that relieves us of the obligation to form opinions about people and to act upon the basis of those opinions, which also implies that at times it will be our duty to express our judgment. So back to the statement, judge righteous judgment. Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. Chapter 7 of John, verse 24. We mentioned that statement back in, back in Isaiah, and you find it in Isaiah chapter 11. It's a prophetic statement about the Messiah. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, other translations say from the root of Jesse. And a branch from his roots shall bear fruit, and the spirit of the Lord shall be upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or, to decide, or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide the equity for the meek, for the meek of the earth. Interesting statement. Judge right judgment or righteous judgment. What does it mean? I need to have all the details before I make those kind of conclusive statements. And sometimes those kind of judgments that we make need to be surrounded by an understanding that this is the way this seems to be to me now with the facts at hand. Maybe other facts will change that opinion or the judgment that I'm making on this occasion, but with the facts at hand, this is what I believe. We are not the final authority, really on anything, especially as it relates to things that are of a spiritual nature. God's Word is of that authority, not you or me. And where His Word makes judgments, we can actually talk about what those judgments are without being out of line when we do. Judge not according to appearance, but judge right with right judgment. Interesting topic. Get a chance to look up in the concordance. Things that go along with the statements that Jesus makes in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. Here in the middle of John at chapter 7. And see how judgment fits and the sayings that Jesus has left us, there are judgment calls and judgments that are made. We're actually called to do the same, but not according to appearance, but judging righteously. Please stay safe. We'll talk again soon.